What is up guys, Deadset here. In this video we'll go over the Hammered in Crusader, one of your best options for Season 10 Greater Rift progression in terms of relative power to time invested. Let's go. The playstyle balances between aggressive mobility, which is drawing stragglers into a pack, finding good density and jumping in the thick of it, and static fighting, which is immobilizing enemies and spamming Blessed Hammer. Provoke will alternate Wrath Management duty with Gabriel's Vambraces, in multi- and single-target situations respectively. The cheap price of Blessed Hammer and the solid resource management already present in the build allows you to take and liberally use a pure offensive law in the face of Laws of Valor with Critical. While the Crusader is naturally durable, protection will be necessary. Iron Skin for incoming damage spikes and Akarat Champion as an overall damage and toughness buff. The final exotic ingredient in the build is Falling Sword, a mobility tool with moderate damage capabilities. It takes on a defensive role with the Seeker of the Light 4-piece bonus. As incoming damage will be significantly cut down after using Falling Sword, make good use of the cooldown resets inherent with the set and cast it when available. Blessed Hammer is the primary spender of the build, empowered to a competitive DPS level through the Seeker of the Light set and its dedicated shield, Guard of Johanna, Blessed Hammer receives double the benefits from the Holy Rune Limitless. Blessed Hammer is also the cheapest spender in the Crusader arsenal, made even easier to manage with its companion bracers, Gabriel's Vambraces. With these factors in mind, you will be able to maintain your Wrath reserves despite the high attack speed of this one-hander build. If you transition the build into regular rifts, it is advisable to swap Limitless away for Dominion. The orbiting hammers are very convenient in clearing trash as you move between elite packs. The other half of your resource management resides in your active skills. Provoke is the Swiss knife at your disposal, the solitary crusader cooldown with inherent wrath generation. It is also able to consistently keep enemies in range with its taunt function and the frequent resets coming from the Seeker of the Light set. To top things off, it offers a potent percentage-based debuff from the Too Scared to Run rune, reducing the rate of incoming attacks and offering an easy proc of Bane of the Trapped. A minor source of Wrath Restoration is added on top through the Crusader's staple Akarat's Champion, offering the modest 5 Wrath per second. That however is not its primary function, it is taken as a sizable, multiplicative damage buff and as a protective juggernaut through the Prophet rune supplying you with a massive additional layer of armor and an invaluable cheat death, Akarat's champion will alternate with indestructible to keep you safe and alive. The use of loss, which are party-wide constant buffs with a powerful activation effect, is a signature of the Crusader class. When pushing greater rifts, your law of choice should be the damage staple Laws of Valor critical. Not only does its attack speed passive bonus fit right at home in the cast speed oriented build like that, but its critical damage bonuses are a welcome addition to a shield wearing build which naturally hungers for the stat. In speedruns, the damage you need for an individual enemy pack will be significantly less, allowing you to focus on speed and utility with Laws of Hope Wings of Angels. In greater rifts, sometimes even profit is not enough. Iron Skin will serve as a second line of defense, cutting incoming damage in half. With the freedom of movement granted by Falling Sword resets from the 2-piece set bonus, you can consider the lengthier safety of the Steel Skin rune in Greater Rifts. In high-end GR fishing, however, and especially during normal rift runs, it is better to take the Flash rune to make quick and precise adjustments to your position for example to make use of Oculus Ring procs from the follower. Patch 2.4 reinforced the place of Falling Sword into the build over other mobility or utility options. Besides the set-induced damage reduction, Falling Sword also becomes a reliable source of immobilization damage bonuses from the cubed hammer jammers through the Sacred Harness Belt. On top of that, proper use of Falling Sword, right in the middle of big packs of course, will skyrocket your Blessed Hammer damage through the cubed Fateful Memory bonus. 
Despite the difference in elemental damage, the recommended rune for Falling Sword during Greater Rift progression is Rapid Descent. When used against good density, you will have a new charge ready almost immediately, freeing up space for other cooldowns to be reset from the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. In regular rifts, where Sacred Harness can be replaced by Gold Wrap, you will need to take part the clouds for the 2 second stun which will proc Hammer Jammers instead of Sacred Harness. This concludes the overview of the active skills, now let us look through the passives. Breaking the traditional two-hander mold, the Blessed Hammer Crusader benefits greatly from Johanna's argument and consequently adopts Fervor as a foundation passive, reforging the classic two-hander Crusader image into one of attack speed and cooldown reduction specialist, this passive will ensure you get the most out of your long timers and the life per hit on gear. You can choose between Holy Cause and Blunt as one of your four passives. The former provides a smaller damage bonus but offers decent healing against big packs of enemies, while the latter adds more than an item's worth of skill percentage bonus to your Blessed Hammer. Both options are viable, but Holy Cause is the recommendation for high grade rifts. Crusaders possess an excellent cheat death passive in the face of indestructible, invariably taken when pushing the boundaries of greater rift progression. Operating on the standard 60 second cooldown, it sweetens the deal with a 5 second window of invulnerability after the proc, a 35% damage increase and a substantial life per kill boost. Indestructible triggers second in the chain of on death mechanics and is preceded by profit essentially adding a third life while Akarat's champion is active. Stacking the safety measures can be excessive in speedruns though, and if you do not feel threatened by the content, you should replace this passive with Long Arm of the Law. This change will ensure you have permanent uptime of Laws of Hope Wings of Angels for the movement speed buff. Rounding out the standard 4 choices, Finery is added as a balanced source of both damage and toughness providing with a 1.5% strength increase for every socket on your gear, weapons and jewelry included. It amounts to a sizable boost with an assumed average of 10 sockets across a well-equipped character. The build incorporates the full Seeker of the Light set, taking all 6 pieces available and leaving the jewelry to balance offense and defense with the Endless Walk set. Rolls-wise, this Blessed Hammer-centric playstyle makes good use of skill damage affixes on the helm and boots. The chest and pants are dedicated to toughness rolls, while the gloves incorporate a CDR roll alongside the staple crit chance and crit damage. A CDR roll is also taken as the fourth primary, alongside strength, vitality and all resistance on the shoulders, adding to the solid foundation of CDR already present in the build. Not skipping on any of the 6 available set pieces to obtain the full Seeker of the Light bonus allows you to split between offense and defense in the jewelry slots. One of the 2.4 reworks, the Endless Walk set, the Compass Rose Ring and Traveler's Pledge Amulet, add a unique mechanic that slowly increases your damage by up to 100% if you remain stationary and drains it away and increases your damage reduction while moving. This dynamic fits the hammered in playstyle, which alternates long distance jumps with periods of stationary Blessed Hammer spam. Your second ring slot should be taken by convention of elements. The ring rotates through all elements available to Crusaders, providing a massive bonus to your main damage skill during the holy proc. It is worth noting that, in the limited challenges of regular rifts, both the Endless Walk set and convention of elements greatly diminish in usefulness. A better jewelry split is a Holy Damage Stone of Jordan for the permanent damage increase and Avarice Band for the synergy with Gold Wrap and Boon of the Hoarder, as well as a Hellfire Amulet of Strength with a helpful 5th passive like Blunt. Created with this very build in mind, Gabriel's Vamp Braces are the mandatory bracers for the build. One of your strongest resource management tools available, these bracers will allow you to pump out hammers at your normal AoE rate without worrying about the lack of targets to provoke. Naturally, try to obtain as close to the 100% Wrath refund as you can, while still aiming for the usual strength, vitality, crit chance and holy damage rolls. The Sacred Harness Belt is a dedicated legendary for the Hammered in builds. 
which adds a free judgment debilitate effect at the landing location of your falling sword, an indispensable effect for the greater rift variation of the build. This damage reduction will be redundant in regular rifts, where you can get all the protection you will ever need via the gold wrap. Similarly to the bracers and belt, a mandatory weapon and shield combo has been added to the game to specifically enhance the Blessed Hammer playstyle. Johanna's argument is the recommended one-handed flail to take up your weapon slot, and what it lacks in elite and elemental bonuses, it makes up in a powerful unique property, increasing the damage and attack speed of your Blessed Hammers by a whopping 100%. Rolls-wise seek life per hit for some much-needed sustain, alongside the usual recommendations for high damage range, damage percentage and strength. The shield counterpart is the aptly named Guard of Johanna. Tailored for a Blessed Hammer playstyle, it adds a massive damage boost of up to 250% against the first three targets you hit with a hammer. This adds a repositioning nuance to the build that often gets lost in the thick of a fight, but you would do well to remember it as it allows you to prioritize targets. It also shines during Rift Guardian fights, where the AoE superiority of the build takes a natural step backwards. For its roles, try to obtain high crit chance, strength, CDR and vitality. Bane of the Trapped is a massive source of additional damage, which is a separate multiplier in your total damage calculation. The gem procs itself with its level 25 property, and is otherwise kept up with Too Scared to Run and Judgment, making it an inseparable part of the Blessed Hammer Crusader. Gogok of Swiftness synergizes well with the build in Greater Rift pushes, indirectly providing you with more cooldown resets and improving healing through faster attacks. The 2.4.1 addition of scaling dodge chance to the gem is just survivability icing on the cake. As previously mentioned though, in regular rifts your protection will be easily taken care of with Boon of the Hoarder's interaction with Gold Wrap, making it a superior choice. Introduced in Season 4, Bane of the Stricken occupies the third and final jewelry socket during Greater Rift progression, building up your damage multiplicatively in prolonged fights, and with a level 25 bonus specifically targeting Rift Guardians, this gem is designed to assist AoE heavy builds in their struggle against single-target high health enemies. When facing less threatening content, for example in lower Greater Rifts or just regular difficulties, this slot is better served by the overall damage boost of Bane of the Powerful. The Kanai's Cube recommendations are as follows. Faithful Memory for the Weapon slot, Hammer Jammers for the Armor slot and Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac for the Jewelry slot. Faithful Memory is a patch 2.4.3 rework that greatly increases Blessed Hammer damage according to the number of enemies struck by Falling Sword. Note that this slot is theoretically interchangeable with Johanna's argument depending on your better rolled item, but Blessed Hammer scales much better in an attack speed, one-hander oriented build, making equipping Faithful Memory a temporary solution. Hammer Jammers are a targeted rework for the Hammered in builds, and they take a guaranteed spot in the armor slot of the cube. The massive temporary damage bonus against crowd control targets shifts the former kiting playstyle of the build into a more comfortable deliberate pace that encourages you to jump into a big brawl and stay there, melting enemies caught within the judgment snare. Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac is a powerful option for Crusaders to cube in the jewelry slot easing the CDR management of the cooldown centric class. Benefiting greatly from the attack speed inherent to this one-handed build, it allows for near permanent uptime of vital skills like Akarat's champion. In the Paragon points, max out movement speed and strength in the core section, both crit stats and CDR in offense, all resistance into life percentage and armor in defense, and area damage and resource cost reduction in utility. Well, this is it for the Hammered In for great rift pushing and speedruns. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the guide, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, talk to me on Twitch and the social media link below, and I'll see you guys next time.